I'm going to give you my recommendations on how to load out your Aegis Vanguard hoplite, and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Loadout Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and in this guide, we will discuss my recommendations for both weapons and components for your Aegis Vanguard hoplite. Our primary build has a focus on PvE, although I will give my recommendations for PvP and stealth as well. My full review of the Vanguard Hoplite will be coming soon, so make sure you're not one of the 60% of viewers who aren't subscribed. I go live on Twitch just before every YouTube release. Come over and give me your thoughts on the Vanguard Hoplite and my loadout. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Aegis Vanguard Hoplite is a cross between the award-winning Vanguard Deep Space Fighter and a dedicated boarding ship. And today, we're going to load it out to excel at just that, getting ground or boarding troops to their objective safely. I'll also be briefly covering stealth. Let's look at the components. We'll start with the power plant, the component that gives all the other components power. The standard power plant on the Vanguard Hoplite is the size 2 grade 3 military class Maelstrom with almost 9400 max power draw per second and a 13.75 second request time. Since we have two power plants, we should go for either stealth or request time. Fortunately enough, the Eclipse is the best at both. Its Grade 1, Stealth class, has over 5300 max power generation per second and a super quick 1.25 second draw request time. We will lose a significant amount of max power draw, but we don't need it and it will reduce the time it takes to reach that power draw down to just 1.25 seconds. Check out my power plant guide that explains why I made this decision. The Eclipse will set you back around 75,000 off of UEC and can be found at these locations. Let's discuss its coolers. These are used to cool our components and weapons. The standard coolers on the Vanguard Hoplite are the size 2 grade 3 military class Arctic coolers with a max cooling rate of 5200 kilos per second and a draw request time of 12.5 seconds. I can't stress this enough, you do not need to upgrade these. However, just in case there are some ballers out there, I recommend Cool Cores. They are grade 3, industrial class with a cooling rate of 8,000 kilos per second and a draw request time of 10 seconds. By upgrading these, you are reducing your power up time and EMP recovery time by 2.5 seconds and slightly reducing your stealth signature. One cool core will cost you around 60,000 off of UEC and can be found at these locations. To find out why upgrading this is solely for EMP recovery or for an explanation on how kilo per second is not a unit of measurement, check out my guide to coolers. Before we get into the shields, the link to this specific loadout at urkel.games can be found via the link in the description. It even tells you the prices and locations on where to find these items in the verse. And if you like, you can head over to the channel Discord. We have a community of over 1,500 citizens who like to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. And it's where I store my most up-to-date loadouts. Link in the description. Now for its shield generator that protects your ship and these components. The Vanguard Hoplite stock shield generators are the size 2 grade 3 military class full stop shield generators with an HP pool of almost 22,000, a 273 HP per second regen rate, they block a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, an 11.25 second down delay, and a 9 second draw request time. To get troops into the fight safely, I'm going to go for a tanky combination. I'll add one all-around great FR-76 that is grade 1, military class, with an HP pool of almost 25,000, a 310 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, a 12 second down delay, and a 7.5 second draw request time. And I'll pair this with the beefy Rampart. The Rampart is grade 1, industrial class, with an HP pool of 32,000, a 173 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, a 12 second down delay, and a 13.5 second draw request time. This will raise your overall shield pool, but the Rampart will be much slower at regening due to its low regen rate and request time. An honorable mention would be dual FR-76s if the slower regen bothers you. The pair will set you back around 91,000 Alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. It should be noted that there is a better shield combo in my opinion. Pairing the FR-76 with a Sukaran is great. The Sukaran has 100% ballistic resistance, so it will need to be taken down completely before you can take hull damage from that shield generator, or completely if you're fortunate enough to have two. The upside is unparalleled shield pool and pretty good stealth. 
The downside is a terrible regen rate, but since it's a PvE build, it really is no big deal. Unfortunately, if you don't own either the Defender or the Prowler, there is no way to get access to the Super Rock. And lastly, the Quantum Drive that will help you get to the stores that sell these components faster. The standard QT drive on the Vanguard Hoplite is the size 2 grade 3 military class crossfield with a 236 megameter per second quantum speed, a 20.7 per megameter fuel requirement, a 2.25 second spool up, and a 21.6 second cool down time. This is another component that does not need to be upgraded. This is the best stock QT drive you can have. However, if you want to save 20 seconds off a jump across the system, I recommend using the XL1. The XL1 is grade one, military class, has a 260 megameter per second quantum speed, a 24 per megameter fuel requirement, a 1.75 second spool up, and a 22.86 second cool down time. This drive is the fastest size two quantum drive and can almost make a trip from one end of the system to the other. The XL1 will run you almost 95,000 off of UEC and can be found at these locations. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. It will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. Now, let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. Underneath the nose, the Vanguard Hoplite is equipped with a size 5 hardpoint with a gimbaled size 4 Revenant ballistic Gatling mounted. One Revenant does 31 alpha damage times 1300 RPM for a total of 672 DPS and a 3700 meter range. I love this weapon for PvP, however, for PvE, I'm looking for longevity and the Revenant's low ammo count doesn't do it for me. Plus, I found the Vanguard nimble enough for fixed. So I'll be adding the big ass CF557 Gallardine laser repeater. One Gallardine does 264 alpha damage times 225 RPM for a total of 990 DPS and a 4700 meter range. These absolutely shred and with their range targets are dead before you even know what you killed. I found my TTK was slightly lower with the CF series but I recommend trying the attrition's due to its overwhelming love from the community. One Gallardine will run you around 32,000 off of UEC and can be found at these locations. Inside the nose, we have four bespoke BVRS ballistic repeaters. One BVRS does 61 alpha damage times 290 RPM for a total of 295 DPS and a 2200 meter range. I do recommend these for PvP, but for PvE, I'll be adding laser repeaters to complement the Gallardine. One GVSR does 55 alpha damage times 310 RPM for a total of 284 DPS and a 2400 meter range. One GVSR will cost you around 6500 alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. The MAN turret totes two size 2 SW16 BR2 Sawbuck Ballistic Repeaters. One Sawbuck does 64 alpha damage times 280 RPM for a total of 299 DPS and a 2100 meter range. I hate these. I want good range and shield penetration because the pilot will be deleting foes from existence before they even get within range. So I've chosen Strife Mass Drivers. One Mass Driver does 230 alpha damage times 63 RPM for a total of 242 DPS and a 2500 meter range. If you're worried about ammo, the size 2 CF series will do just fine. One Mass Driver will cost you around 14,000 alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. Inside the fuselage, we have two bespoke missile racks, each holding four size 2 missiles, one with four Ignite 2s and one with four Dominator 2s. The way missiles are behaving right now, I'd go for the most damage or quickest lock time. For the most damage and countermeasure resistance, I'd add Strike Force 2s. One Strike Force 2 is size 2, does 3800 damage, has a 2.4 second lock time and a 4800 meter lock range. If you prefer quick lock time or intend to PvP, a very respectable honorable mention would be Rattler 2s due to their incredibly quick lock time and temporary blindness. If you don't have a whopping 422,000 alpha UEC for this build, I would buy them in the following order. Please note, this total does include the XL1 but does not include upgrading the coolers. Since the Vanguard series has military grade components, the stock loadout will not limit you in any significant way. So the most important things here are the weapons and shields followed by the stealth power plants. Upgrading any more is not necessary. Let's talk briefly about stealth. 
While a full stealth build in a Vanguard will not allow you to attack outside of your detection range, it can give your enemies less time to prepare for an attack. This could be good for PvP. So here's how to load it out. I'll keep the Eclipse power plants from the main build, throw on Stealth Grade 1 Nightfire coolers, add two Stealth Grade 1 Umbra shield generators, and you can pick whatever QT drive you prefer. I think that's pretty simple. Now for the weapons, it's less cut and dry. For stealth, I prefer long-range ballistic weapons. They penetrate shields, and most importantly, they don't announce your location to the rest of the verse. Unfortunately, again, there aren't very many size 5 weapons that fit this description. The deadbolts appear to have an overheating button, so we'll go gimbaled once again. It's the same as my PvP recommendations, Revenant under the nose and BBRs in the nose. And for the turret, the mass drivers I recommended before will do fine. Let's take a look at those stealth stats. Your IR in the Vanguard Hoplite after about 30 minutes of flying around is around 7500 with this stealth build. So depending on your opponent's radar, your detection range is between 3750 and 5625 meters if you're not using afterburn. You are free to fire around at any speed while firing without raising your IR significantly. But if you use afterburner, that goes right out of the window. This includes space break, so only use it if you are in trouble and need to bug out. To be honest, I don't see myself using this stealth build much, but it can be fun to try out. I hope you enjoyed my loadout guide of the Hoplite. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments. My full review of the Aegis Vanguard Hoplite will be coming shortly, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. Remember, I go live on Twitch just before every YouTube release. Come and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are six ways to support it. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my Vessels of the Verse collection over at Displate and in the merch store. Number four, you can follow me on Twitch. Prime subs help support the channel. Number five, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a channel member or even better, a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of Stanton Collection available to all patrons and channel members. If not, just sticking around until the end is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.